Hello there. Why are you sitting in the dark? There's a white dust on the hem of your jeans that indicates that you've parked at a temporary lot, but it's been raining outside and the dust is dry, which means that the parking lot is most likely still undercover, probably a construction. There are two shopping malls within reasonable traveling distance that have recently added parking structures, the first of which is Western Mall, but your hair's been blow-dried. Unless you drove halfway across town to your hairdresser, it's highly unlikely you would have voluntarily spent an hour and a half in rush hour traffic, not for a Tuesday night anyway, which leaves Mall of the Americas, conveniently located not ten minutes away from your favorite hair salon, which indicates that you've parked at the newly constructed garage and therefore visited the mall. Oh, you mean the giant shopping bag didn't give it away? That too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So maybe I just finished binge watching Sherlock Holmes for like the third time. You really cannot blame me. It is just that good. You can gather that I'm a huge fan of Sherlock Holmes and really not just the BBC series. There's a lot to love in this world. And it turns out that King's Wild Project founder and artist Jackson Robinson is a huge fan as well. His 2013 Kickstarter campaign for a limited edition Sherlock Holmes inspired collection which spanned four different decks was a huge success and even though I am a relative latecomer to the collecting of playing cards this particular collection was extremely high on my list. Now I finally got my hands on them. Quickly, I just want to extend my sincerest appreciation for all the feedback. I read every single comment you guys post. I want this channel to be the go-to place for card reviews, and I hope that you'll consider subscribing if you haven't already. Also, make sure to stay all the way to the end for a chance to win a King's Wild Sherlock Holmes deck directly from me. Okay, so there is a lot to cover. Let's get into this. It goes without saying that Jackson Robinson has a keen eye for design. The tuck boxes of all four editions are great. The Holmes and Moriarty editions are identical but for the colors of the box and the foil stamping. Both decks feature an embossed damask pattern not too dissimilar from the ones that adorn the walls of my living room. The same pattern will make an appearance on the card backs later. The font and design choice is great as well. The sides of the boxes feature more lettering and the traditional ad copy can be found on the bottom of the tug cases. The decks feature more foil patterning on the inside of the tug with the home's silhouette on the small tug flaps. The Hound of Baskerville edition forgoes the Sherlock Holmes naming in favor of a cool monogrammed HB logo on one side and a small circular image of the silhouetted hound on the back. The same damask pattern embossing can be found on this deck as well. Finally, my favorite of the bunch, the Baker Street Edition. This one includes an image of British Parliament's Big Ben on the front under the foil lettering and an embossed representation of the amazing back design on the other side. More on the back design a little later. The inside features a tartan pattern that immediately reminded me of luxury brand Burberry and the small tuck flaps have a seven of clubs reveal. All four of the decks include a limited edition numbered foil stamp seal. Three with Sherlock's fictional 221B Baker Street address on them and the Hound of Baskerville edition repurposing the monogram logo. All four boxes are really nice and they feel similar enough to be part of the same line but unique enough to warrant owning all four. And fortunately, the cards inside the box are just as well executed. Let's start with the Holmes and Moriarty editions, which both feature the same back design. A damask scroll work in varying shades of reddish brown on cream stock for the Holmes edition, and a dark slate color on light gray for the Moriarty edition. The design is intricate yet easy on the eyes, it definitely has a vintage feel, and there's a poker style border surrounding the design. The Holmes Edition cards, as it is in all four sets, are completely custom. Pip placement is standard, although the reds are slightly muted and the pips are narrower. The indice font is modern without losing ties to the subject matter. There are two ad cards, one is a double backer and the other features some King Wild Project copy on one side 
and a woodcut style illustration of Holmes and Watson by Shane Tyree on the other. The Jokers are identical images of a boy, presumably from Holmes' homeless network of street spies, except he's doffing his cap with a wink in one card while wearing it in the other. Of course, the real draw on these decks is the court cards. Here you can get full color stylized illustrated cartoon versions of all the characters that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle made famous. Holmes is the king of spades, Watson the king of clubs, incidentally I love that he's holding his umbrella like a sword. Some of the other favorites, Lestrade, Mycroft, Adler, Mrs. Hudson, all make an appearance. Holmes' arch enemy Professor Moriarty is doing his best as the Suicide King of Hearts, and even Queen Victoria is the Queen of Diamonds. Look, don't even get me started on Victoria, the BBC is killing it! Also, you know what, I'm a huge fan of British royalty. I'm a little offended that I wasn't invited to Harry and Meghan's wedding. The Moriarty deck shares a lot of the same design choices, although it substitutes a few key differences. Besides the color swap on the backs and faces, the red of heart and diamond pips is replaced with metallic silver, and the courts take on a monochromatic look with this addition. With Moriarty looking a little better in his own deck, taking on the role of the King of Spades. The heroes are all absent, leaving only villains and antagonists, still Queen Victoria is the Queen of Diamonds. The only break in the monochrome treatment is one of the included Joker cards, a blood splattered sign of the four. There's a clean one as well, plus a double backer, and another ad card with the same copy and illustration as the Holmes edition. The Ace of Spades in both editions are big and ornate, and feature the edition title. The Hound of the Baskervilles edition takes the same back design of the previous two and injects some red for contrast, and adds the circular silhouetted Hound logo. But that's where the similarities end. The card faces here are much more detailed than in the more simplistic versions. There's a watermarked monogram logo ghosted onto the back of each spot card. The pips are also detailed with an etched diagonal pattern on one side. There's a parchment paper staining effect printed on the cards too. The font in the indices is more vintage looking as well, and finally the court cards, although reminiscent of the figures in the Holmes edition, are new and illustrated with a fantastic woodcut era appropriate monochromatic style. The renderings are much more realistic than the cartoon portraits in the other two editions. The Ace of Spades is big and ornate here too, although I do think Jackson missed a little bit of an opportunity to bring a close-up of the Hound of Baskervilles into play, which oddly does not make any other appearance other than on the card backs. The included color swap jokers feature monogrammed medallion designs. Finally, we come to my favorite deck in the series, the Baker Street Edition. This is the most intricate back design, and the one that probably strays furthest from the bunch, but it's really the most amazing. Two-way card backs that feature a slew of famous items from the Holmes lore. There's revolvers, tobacco pipes, violins, magnifying glasses, syringes, and clues all suspended over a lattice of leafy scrollwork. The cardstock is made to look weathered. On the faces you get vintage looking pips and more straightforward indices, and in a cool twist some of the center oriented pips have been replaced with the silhouette of Sherlock smoking his pipe. Finally the courts have the same high detail etchings as in the Baskerville version. The Ace of Spades gives us one last look at the Great Detective, and you also get a double backer and two jokers, a clergyman and a groom, plus a roster card. All four decks are from the USPCC, and you can imagine that means they handle beautifully, even for someone of limited cardistry skill, such as myself. Fans, pharaohs, flourishes, all look great. This is definitely one of my favorite literature inspired decks and it bears mentioning that the decks are fully licensed by the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle estate. The quality of the artwork is great, the tuck boxes are standout, the face is easy to read for gameplay and magic, and there's enough variety from deck to deck that owning all four doesn't feel like overkill. Having said that, if you only have enough space in your collection for one Sherlock Holmes deck, I would recommend the Baker Street Edition. 
The decks are long sold out on kingswildproject.com and you could probably still find some at select playing card retailers. eBay is a good option too if you're willing to pay the price. But if you want a chance to win one of these long out of print decks for free, I've got a case for you intrepid sleuths out there. Three steps. One, like this video. Two, be subscribed to this channel. And three, well, here's where we have a little fun. I'm about to lay out a little riddle filled with clues. Solve the case and leave a comment below with the answer to the following question. Which one of the four is the deck du jour? At 317, a clue can be seen which eliminates one and leads to more fun. Four to the two to the seven, from hell to heaven, for that's another deck dead, leaving two instead. Time is running down, six, five, four, there is number three of the decks to flee, leaving the fourth of which to be free. So which of the four is the deck du jour? Well, Watson, the game is on. One more thing, guys. Congrats to Twitter follower KidFury1810 for winning my Chris Ramsey first playing cards giveaway. Send me a message, Kid Fury, to claim your prize. I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please let me know if you did. I am the Gentleman Wake. See you next time. Click here to subscribe and click here to watch another of my favorite videos.